Okay, let's talk about the GACE Paraprofessional Assessment. And GACE stands for Georgia Assessments for the Certification of Educators. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take uh, the paraprofessional assessment, obviously the GACE paraprofessional assessment in the state of Georgia. And that is excellent because paraprofessionals are an extremely important part of um, our education system, okay? And what we're gonna be doing in this particular video is looking at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for the GACE paraprofessional assessment uh, math section. Uh, we'll get to the problem here in a second, but first let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last uh, several years, I've constructed many online um, math courses to include a GACE paraprofessional um, assessment math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But basically, uh, the kind of math that's going to be on the, uh, this particular assessment is, I would classify it as high school level math. And the way I do my courses or construct my courses, I, you know, I do my research of what is going to be on uh, this particular exam and then try to con construct a kind of custom math curriculum to get you ready for it, right? And that means not to under teach you, but not to over teach you. Not, you're not going to see like advanced trigonometry or calculus and st stuff like that, but you're going to have to know some basic high school level math. So that would include algebra and geometry, amongst other things, and obviously the more basic stuff, fractions, decimals, etc. So if math is not your thing, you know, don't panic. Okay, you just need to come up with a good study plan and uh, you know work that plan to be ready. Uh, to pass this assessment. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this problem. All right, so this problem, the way I like to do these videos is uh, tell you what the problem is, and for those of you who can do the problem, uh, go ahead and pause the video and do it. Uh, for those of you who need a bit of a hint, I'm going to give you a hint. Okay, then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you the problem first. So we have a what we call a function so this is a function okay and i like you to evaluate the function for this particular value okay so given this function i'd like you to find f of negative two all right so if you think you could do that problem go ahead and uh, do so and you know don't look it up on google just be honest about your you know you know just try to figure it out okay um or even toy around with it okay so here comes the hint if you don't want to hear the hint pause the video Okay, so first of all, what am I asking? Well, I'm asking, I have a function and I want you to evaluate a function for a particular value. So let's look at a more basic uh, example of evaluating a function. So first of all, you need to know what a function is. So f of x, let's just say 2x plus 5, okay? So what does it mean to evaluate a function? So for example, if I wanted you to find f of 3 of this function here, what I'm asking you to do is to plug in the value of 3 over wherever the x is at. So wherever you see an x, I see an x right here in this function rule. Okay, and I'm really skimming over this a lot. Okay, I'm kind of giving you a, a quick, quick overview of functions. This is a huge topic in mathematics. But um, I think this is what I'm telling you here. If you're not familiar with how to do this problem, this will definitely explain it. But evaluating a function means you're going to replace the x with the number. Okay, so I'm asking you to plug in 3 wherever you see an x and then simplify that. So here, I have an x here, so I'm going to replace that x. And this is 2 times x, right? 2x in algebra means 2 times x. I'm going to replace this with a 3. All right, so instead of 2x plus 5, f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 5. So now I just got to go ahead and figure out what this is. So 2 times 3. Remember, there's this thing called order of operations. If you're not familiar with that, that's something you definitely need to know. But I'm going to um, do this first. So 2 times 3 is obviously 6. 6 plus 5 is uh, 11. Okay, so f of 3 for this particular function is equal to 11. Okay. All right, so that's the uh, basics of evaluating a function, and that's what we're um, looking to do in this particular problem. Now, of course, this is made a little bit more interesting uh, because I have some negative numbers and some powers over here. But um, if you just kind of follow that 
concept of what I just demonstrated, uh, and you're very careful and you know your positive and negative numbers and order of operations, you should be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate this function um, for f of negative 2. So we'll write it out this way. So f of negative 2 for this specific function is going to be 3. So I'm replacing every x with a negative 2. So that's going to be negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 plus 5. Okay, so what do I do first? Well, in order to do this problem successfully, you need to know the order of operations. That's that PEMDAS, okay? And I don't want to go off on too many tangents here uh, on this. So you know, either you kind of know it or you don't, okay? But this is the order of operations, a little uh, acronym, little steps that kind of uh, help us uh, determine what to do first. But the P is uh, parentheses. So we don't have anything inside parentheses other than a value, but we need to move on with E uh, being exponents or powers. So this is what we have to do first, okay? So that's going to be 3 times negative 2 squared is, hopefully all of you said that's 4. So that would be correct. So let's just kind of do this step by step. All right, so what do I do next? I'm going to do uh, any multiplication or division, whatever I see from left to right. And here I have 3 times 4, so that's going to be 12, plus 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, plus 5. So now, last I can just do addition and subtraction, and that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so 12 plus negative 4, um, hopefully all of you out there were uh, blurted out, that is 8. So 8 plus 5 is going to be 13 if I did my little arithmetic correctly. Okay, so f of negative 2 is 13. That is the answer. All right, so if you're able to do this, you know, without uh, a hint, uh, and you understood, um, you know, you not only were you able to get the answer, but if you, you know, understood why you got the answer, that's excellent, okay? So that's, that's very good. If you under, you know, if you could do this problem with the hint, okay, that's good too, okay? But you still, you need to know more than just, you know, um, you know, you just can't get the answer and just be lucky about it. Be like, oh, I got the right answer, but I wasn't quite sure how I got it, or I just got lucky and I got the right answer. You want to understand math, you know, um, stronger than that, okay? But if you were lost on this thing, don't panic, okay? Just use it as uh, feedback, okay, to, uh, to study for it. Now, paraprofessionals, like I said, although you're not, you're, you know, like the teacher assistants, you're still involved with the education uh, of uh, students, okay? You are very important, and, you know, you very well may, you know, uh, go for becoming a teacher. Maybe that's your game plan. Maybe you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to start off as a paraprofessional um, and then maybe move to be a teacher one day, you know? So you just don't, you just don't know where your career is going to take you. So what I'm saying is, uh, to do well on this exam, you're going to have to really know your math, okay? So study hard because that's going to only be a win-win-win. It's going to be a win for you because you're, you're going to increase your odds of passing. It's going to be a win for your students, and it's going to be a win long-term for your career options, especially if you uh, want to, you know, uh, become an actual teacher someday. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my GACE paraprofessional math test prep course in the description of this video. Very, very comprehensive. It certainly can help you out if you don't have a study plan right now. Uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, I hope you consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, a good 12 years, at least at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out, but I'm posting new stuff all the time, so hopefully you consider subscribing. If you liked the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. What's motivating you to become a uh, paraprofessional? Okay, uh, do you know somebody who said, "Hey, this would be a, a good job," uh, or you're just interested uh, working with students? You know, uh, maybe you're coming from one career to another. You know, do you plan on uh, becoming a teacher? Are you going to college? Any feedback is good feedback. Um, but if you know, being new to teaching, uh, you're obviously um, uh, realizing that there's a lot of certification <laughs> exams. So, you know, a paraprofessional exam is one, but if you want to do other things in teaching, there's always that certification exam, no matter what state or what level you're going to have to go through. And these exams are not, at least in my experience, 
Um, you know, they're not designed to be like easy. Okay. I mean, they're professional certifications and, you know, for you to become a paraprofessional, that's something to be very proud of. Okay. Um, so, uh, but hopefully you don't stop there. Okay. Uh, cause you're going to make an impact with students. And, uh, if you are, have the, uh, in it, you know, you're motivated to want to help students, you know, you definitely um, have what it takes uh, to uh, to be a teacher or to, to go much further than being a paraprofessional. But if the paraprofessional is where you um, are going to, you know, make your career, that's awesome too because, you know, you're going to make an impact no matter what. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the GACE paraprofessional um, assessment. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.